This is Tiger Stadium in the lakeside city of Detroit, Michigan, where today in a 25 mile an hour wind, the St. Louis Cardinals and Detroit Lions meet in what is the big game among many key ones in the NFL this week. Never before has there been a season like this one, for going into the 12th week, 18 of the 26 teams still have a chance to land in the Super Bowl. Races in each of the six divisions in the NFL are so close that all 13 games played this week have a bearing on the playoffs. Major reason for this is the league's new alignment. As an example, look what happened last Saturday on the frozen field of Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, Minnesota. The Northland area is a winter wonderland for sports. But the biggest attraction of all is the football Vikings, who behind one of the finest defenses ever seen in football, roll to their third consecutive division title on Saturday by mauling the Bears. The win was even more impressive because they did it without their starting quarterback, Gary Quazzo. Bob Lee passed them to victory. In past years, this would have ended the hopes for the second place Detroit Lions, but today they are very much alive because they can still qualify for the playoffs by being the second place team with the highest winning percentage. Thus, their game against St. Louis is crucial for them. As for the Cardinals, the game between the New York Giants and Buffalo was vital because the Giants were also very much in the running. They trailed St. Louis by a game and a half and could project themselves even further into the crowded race by beating the Bills. This the Giants did, led by two familiar names, Tucker Fredrickson and Fran Tarkenton, and also by their newest stars, running back Ron Johnson and receiver Clifton McNeil, both of whom were acquired in trades. These four key players, plus a revamped Giants defense, set up a showdown next week when New York meets the Cardinals in St. Louis. Thus, the game in Detroit is crucial for the Cardinals, for if they lose, their lead could be cut to only a half game over the Giants and the Dallas Cowboys, who also won this week. So today's contest is another in a long string of must games, so common this season, and this one promises to be a titanic clash between two evenly matched squads. These are the two highest scoring teams in the entire NFL, and both have impressive defensive statistics. The Lions defense is the leader at stopping the run, and appropriately today, they'll have to halt the best running game in the league. The Cardinals boast a defense that is second in the league only to Minnesota. They've been so good that they had a streak of three straight shutouts. With five consecutive wins, St. Louis has a lot of momentum, but both teams have great motivation. The trip to Miami in January. I'm Jack Whitaker, and this is the NFL Game of the Week. St. Louis versus Detroit. The game opened with St. Louis getting the first break in a game that would have many. Jim Hart completed a pass to breakaway threat John Gilliam, but safety Mike Wager hung on to thwart a first down and forced the first punt of the game. It was a dandy for St. Louis. Lem Barney let the punt slip right through his hands and Jerry Danen fell on the ball on the Lion 37. It was the first turnover in a game of errors. Once again, Jim Hart and the Cardinals found Detroit's defense too tough to move against. So the reliable Jim Bakken was called in and he delivered from the 29 yard line. St. Louis had drawn first blood and led three to nothing. The Lions started off as if they couldn't be stopped. Alty Taylor accelerated through the St. Louis defense before being bumped out of bounds 20 yards later. But then the turnover, which would play a major role today, ended Detroit's series. Landry's pass to McCullough was deflected and intercepted by Miller Farr who, for the first time, was playing opposite his brother, Lions running back Melfar. His theft was the last significant play of the first quarter. But the first play of the second period was a whopper. 
Jim Hart lofted the ball into an open space in Detroit's zone defense. And John Gilliam avoided two flying tackles before being brought down from behind by Wayne Walker at the Lions' eight-yard line. The pass covered 79 yards. Incredibly, St. Louis got nothing out of it. The Lions forced another field goal attempt. And for the first time this year, Jim Bakken missed from inside the 40. The wind was the big factor today, and receivers were having problems catching the ball. Charlie Sanders muffed this pass from Landry. So the Detroit quarterback went to the screen to Mel Farr, which was successful for 21 yards, and for the first time as a pro, Mel Farr was tackled by Miller Farr. Detroit was unable to move any further, though, and Herman Weaver punted to Chuck Latourette at the St. Louis 30. But once again, the wind-whipped football was misjudged, and Detroit had new life on the enemy 27. Detroit moved closer to the Cardinal goal and a diving catch by Charlie Sanders at the three. The big tight end tried to roll the rest of the distance. But even with a first down at the three, the Lions couldn't cross the goal line. Defense won out again as Detroit settled for Earl Mann's 14-yard field goal and a 3-3 tie ball game. For the rest of the half, Detroit's defense held the Cardinals to zilch. The key was their ability to control number 36, MacArthur Lane. The Lion linebacker stalked him so well that Lane gained only nine yards running in the first half. In the meantime, Detroit's offense was controlling the ball. Greg Landry arched a beautiful pass into the arms of Earl McCullough, and he dragged Roger Worley to the 13. With two minutes left in the half, Landry's perfect pass to Taylor in the end zone was dropped. Taylor had slipped a bit on the icy surface, so Errol Mann kicked his second field goal from the 13, and Detroit took the lead, 6-3. Twenty-seven seconds later, Detroit had the ball again as Chuck Latourette, returning the kickoff, fumbled for the second time. Linebacker Ed Mooney thought he should have scored with his fumble recovery, but the inevitable whistle had blown. Nevertheless, Detroit had another golden opportunity, and again it was Charlie Sanders who burned the Cardinals. First, the 235-pound tight end caught the ball despite tight double coverage by Larry Stallings and Jamie Rivers. They're showing the blitz, and now they back off. Flags are down. Landry going to the corner deep. Broken up beautifully by the linebacker, Dan Parrish. Man-to-man -man coverage, and Parrish, the rookie out of Stanford, goes all the way with Mel Farr. And I told you earlier, he's dangerous. Now, the Cardinals were caught for just jumping off, as this time the Redbirds lost that battle of audibles on the line of scrimmage. Penalty. The 
will bring up a measurement for the first down. Pat Haggerty called. That's the official timeout so they can make sure this measurement, a very crucial one in this ballgame. There it is. <laughs> Lions first down. The 12 and a half yard line. Thirty five seconds left in the half. Six to three Detroit. And Landry is upset and down at the 18 yard line. Joe Schmeezing, number 82. Time running out, the clock moving with 23. Landry trying to get his team back. No huddle. 15 seconds. Flags are down. Well, accomplished what he was trying to do was stop the clock, but some coaches don't feel that you have to waste a play to stop the clock. Puts it back to the 24. Doesn't really change the Detroit situation very much. It's still, as far as they're concerned, second and goal with 12 seconds showing. Second down and 12 seconds. The blitz picked up down to the two yard line. It's enough for a first down, but what is the time? Three seconds. Plenty of time. It will be stopped. The St. Louis blitz was effective. And notice the blitzing linebacker misses Landry, the quarterback. That's the whole thing. Greg moved inside and fired a strike. To Mr. Tight End, Charlie Sanders. But the Cardinal defense has averted a touchdown at least. As Sanders couldn't quite get it into the end zone. The ball at the three. Three seconds on the clock. Earl Mann is in. They must be keeping the field goal kickers in a hothouse somewhere under the stadium and bring them out <laughs> just to kick. From the 11. And it is good. The half ends on the field goal. Half uh, of a lot of offensive football, even though it's only 9 3. We should pick up Alty Taylor now, an offense for Detroit. A good block by Farr as he cuts back and to the outside. Finally, run out of bounds, but. He picks up 21 yards. Alty Taylor. Here's Miller Farr now covering McCullough after the ball has bounced off McCullough's shoulder pads for the interception. This should be hard on offense now. Just finding Gilliam in between the zone, the up back and the deeper safety man, and Gilliam can really turn it on. And Wayne Walker, number 55, a linebacker not known for speed, makes a great play on defense. 79-yard pass play, the big one for the Cardinals in the first half. This is the punt now by the Lions, and it's fumbled by Laderette. Let's check it out now, back on the 26-yard line of St. Louis. There's the fumble, a big scramble, and you can see the pile over there. Finally, he comes up with a Detroit possession, a big one. Now we're about ready for that second-half kickoff, 9-3, Detroit over St. Louis. Laderette and Shivers, deep for St. Louis. Second half underway. The nine yard line. Laterette turns the corner across the 30 and out of bounds at the 31 and a half yard line. Nine to three, Detroit leads. Well, we talk about two good defensive ball clubs, but if you could find any difference between the Lions and the St. Louis Cardinals on defense today, it's really tough. Two great offensive teams really being stopped and controlled by the other's defense. 
Well, let's see if they've adjusted. MacArthur Lane. The 35. Numar, number 50, the linebacker on the left side on the stop. <clears throat> Kansas City and Denver. Jan Stenerud has kicked a 35-yard field goal with 2.19 left in the first period. It's 10 nothing now, the Chiefs over the Broncos. Second down and six from the 35. Jackie Smith, Mike Weger, number 28 on the tackle. About two yards on the play. It'll be third down and four. The Lions came with a safety blitz. The open receiver was there, but a real good tackle, as you said, by Mike Weger. Buffalo and the Giants. It's the Giants 6-6 six, six now with a Buffalo team. That's a Pete Gogolak field goal from 16 out for the Giants. A lot of field goals today. Third down and four. Oh! And Williams almost came up with it after Rasmussen almost came up with it. The Lions now, watch the safety blitz against Hart. You'll see number 28, here comes Weger. Roland meets him, the ball is on target but knocked away and almost intercepted by Barney and almost caught by Williams. Fourth down. Barney and Bobby Williams are back. Deep for the Lions, ladder at the punt. End over end. Barney, the 29, makes his way up to the 20, uh, the 34. Well, the opening production number in tomorrow night's Carol Burnett show features Carol, her regular cast, and guest Mel Torme in a musical salute to the many charms of Don Rickles, who, of course, is overwhelmed. The charms, Don't miss of, that one, boy. charms of Don Rickles. <laughs> Don Rickles on the Carol Burnett show tomorrow night at 10, 9 central time here on CBS. Mr. Warren. Taylor in motion. Pitch out goes to far. Gallagher with the block. He goes around the outside. Rowe misses him, and Larry Wilson finally puts him out at the 43 yard line. Well, I bet Miz as far as having trouble on this last yeah. play, deciding who to root for. Miller came up and missed Mel. Mel gave him a little inside fake, and brother beat brother. I wonder what they'll say tonight when they probably have dinner together. Second and two from the 42. Miller Farr, number 20 on St. Louis. Mel Farr, number 24 on Detroit. Oops, no gain on the play. Farr slipped that time and... Uh, Jack, I received word from the maintenance man that the end zones were covered, but that the one to the right of the screen or the viewer at home, uh, the one everybody's been slipping in, is in a shadow that is never in the warmth. Uh, there's not much sunlight today anyway, but it's never in the warmth, and therefore it stays frozen solid, I guess, from about November on. Third and two. That is Charlie Sanders, Larry Wilson on the tackle. The thing that makes this play, though, is the fake that Landry makes to far on the inside. Again, you can see Sanders now escaping. Uh, the, the good fake allowed him to get off clean, and Landry threw a real bullet. Larry Wilson not in bad shape, but one step's in bad shape if you're covering Charlie Sanders. First and 10 at the Cardinal 38. Only the second third down conversion for the Lions. Third reception for Sanders, or fourth rather, for 61 yards. He's been their big one. Flag is down. He's going deep for McCullough. And Roger Worley almost came up with it. Flag is down up at the 45-yard line. 
Going to have some offensive holding, I believe, on this. Let's see what the call is. An excellent play by Young Worley. He got in front of the intended faster receiver and made McCullough try to run up his back. It's legal, and it's an excellent move by number 22. Larry Wilson said we will accept the penalty. It puts it back at the 41-yard line of Detroit. Holding Detroit. Boston and Miami, the Dolphins 27, Boston now 13. They tell me that Joe Cap is beginning to throw the ball and get hot up there. First down. Well, Landry couldn't get away from Rowe, who slowed him up enough. But he's finally put away by Fred Heron. And there's a loss on the play even more now. Back to the 37. Number 11 was trying to screen, but boy, these defenses are so smart. The Cardinals then just, they felt it, and they moved out and had the back. I believe they were trying to screen to Alfie Taylor. He just had him tied up. Second and half a football field's worth. Larry going to go or not? No, he's dropping back. A flag is down. Taylor, the intended receiver, apparently against the Lions in the way they're reacting. Mel Farr didn't come and put his hand down in a set position. Now, whether or not they're going to call illegal procedure, I don't know. He didn't move, however, when he started to make the audible adjustment. Let's see where the going to be against Detroit. You have to set for at least a full count. Whether or not that's upright or no, it's from behind there. It's going to be from point of foul, which means it took place back uh, in the blocking pattern there. Well, it was <coughs> second and 35. It is now going to be second. <laughs> Woo, the ball all the way back to the 13-yard line. Holding on the outside by the tackle, I suppose. I was trying to run the fellow around. Now, this is the longest one I've had this year. Second and, what do you call it, 65, 50? That is Owens, and he gets nowhere. I get about 55 yards. 58 yards, I think it is, Tom. First down. <laughs> I don't even think they can punt it that far. Third and 55. What do you call? Cardinal defense now taking advantage of these penalties and really boxing the Lions in. 9-3. Detroit leads. Ten minutes left in this third period. It's third and an awful long way. Here's Charlie Sanders. Jamie Rivers hit him first, did not bring him down, but slowed him down. The Lions get the ball out to the 29-yard line. Again on third down and 55. It's a pretty good call. You keep Charlie Sanders in the block, fakes it, he drifts out, picks up only about 15 yards, which leaves him a little bit short. Fourth down. And Herman Weaver to punt. The 35 yard line, 36 yard line of St. Louis. Forty three yard punt by Herman Weaver. And with the score, Detroit nine, St. Louis three. Let's pause for a moment. Detroit nine, St. Louis three. The Cardinals are now trying to put an offense together. They have only two first downs and 18 total yards rushing. Arthur Lane gets it up to the 40.
most people feel like the heart of this Detroit defense, and it's a super bunch of guys in blue, are the linebackers, Walker, Lucci, and Numoff. While not real big, are really overpowering in their stature. They're, they're experienced, they know each other very well, and they react. They've got tremendous lateral pursuit and good movement. Second down and six. Sended for Gilliam deep. Jim Hart had a pretty good rush, too. Gilliam won't know that because he was running his sideline and up, but Hart had Larry Hannon and Mitchell, the two defensive ends, uh, uh, putting a squeeze on him. The New York Jets leading Oakland 10 to nothing now in the second period. In the third period of play, and uh, Jack, as we saw last week, the Jets have really come up with a real good, solid defensive football team. Good football team. Hart now is six for 16 and 88 yards. He's got a third down and six. Oh, nice catch at midfield by Gilliam. First down. Let's see it now. From behind the offensive formation, Hart realizes he's working against a zone. Gilliam did too, and they hooked up, and the ball right on target. Excellent throw. Third first down for St. Louis in this ball game. Jim Hart, number 17. Ernie McMillan back in. MacArthur Lane. Ooh, he looked like he might go somewhere, but Mike Lucci. Jim Mitchell stopped him, along with Numoff. At the 47, a pickup of three. Jackie might keep in mind, too, that at this stage of the season, most of these players are playing with some injury that they don't talk about or they don't want people to know about, but they're not all 100% healthy. They're carrying something that hurts. Second and seven. Gilliam at the 35-yard line. Barney ushers him out of bounds. A first down again for St. Louis. Here we are in slow motion, Jack. Let's see if we can watch the pattern as Roland and MacArthur Lane set up. See the safety blitz coming. Rasmus at a real good strike, and again, Hart is on target. And Gilliam is tough man-to-man. -to -man. First and 10 at the Lions, 35. Roland. There's the hole, but it closes as Johnny Roland gets down to about the 28, 27 yard line. I beg your pardon, the 33 yard line. Dolphins, 34. Boston, 13 in the third period. Larry Zonka, the big Syracuse Orangeman, scoring from one yard out. And it's Baltimore 16, Philadelphia 3, as Mosley's kicked a field goal for the Eagles. Second down and eight at the 33 for St. Louis. Gilliam and Williams to the right. For Jackie Smith, and he has it in traffic. Between Mike Lucci and Dick LeBeau, he got it. Good for another first down. The best offensive series for St. Louis today. So they did some adjustment at halftime, Tom. Well, Charlie Winter has a good offensive formation there. He puts two of his most dangerous receivers, Williams and Gilliam, on the same side, knowing you have to double or rotate that way, and then goes back to his tight end all by himself in a man-to-man -man situation. And Jackie Smith is as tough as they come. First and 10 at the line, 22. Again, Gilliam, and this time, Smith. Ball gets down across the 20 to the 16, 17 yard line. Second down and five. This is the St. Louis football that has taken them, of course, to the 8 2 1 record. Lost, losing only to the Rams, tying Kansas City, and of course the Giants beat them 35 17.
<laughs> Everybody's down. <clears throat> Heart is down. Flags are down. The broken play is going to be against uh, the Lions for jumping. The easiest play to get really injured on is uh, a broken play like that when you don't know whether to go or not. And the penalty gives another first down to St. Louis. But when in doubt, uh, do your thing, you know. It's better to go full speed and then worry about it later. First and ten at the 12-yard line. Jerry Danen in now. He and Gilliam to the right. MacArthur Lane to the left. Across the ten to the nine. Three yards. It'll be second down and seven. Green Bay and Pittsburgh. It's the Steelers nine to six over Green Bay in the third period. Four minutes, 45 seconds left to play in this third quarter. MacArthur Lane to the seven. We pause five seconds for station identification. Jerry Danen goes out and Williams comes back in. It'll be third down and five from the seven yard line. Could be the most crucial call of the game for Jim Hart, the quarterback. Third and long, close. Intercepted by Farney. It was intended for Williams, but like Charlie Sanders before him, he had just slipped in that very icy end zone. Lim Barney, number 20, the gambler. His fifth interception of the year. Ball out to the Lions' 20-yard line. First and 10 for the men in blue. With the score, Detroit 9, St. Louis 3. Let's pause for a moment. The Lions have just come up with an interception of the end zone. First and 10 at the 20. They lead 9 to 3. Alty Taylor. Boom. At the 20 and a half yard line. Rivers making quite a tackle from the middle linebacking spot. And somebody's hurt down on the field. One of the Cardinals. Let's John see. Parrish, I believe, the other linebacker. Let's see. Let's see it now. Notice the tackle also pulls on this. Shows number 73. And Frank Gallagher. Nowhere to go, though, as Worley turns it back. And the whole thing might have come down on the young linebacker Parrish. He's still in there, though. Second and ten. Far. Oh, the stove all read him beautifully. Hello, Mel. Jerry Stovall, hampered by injuries, and LSU great is leaving the field now after guessing right on that strong side sweep. Aggravating the injury he had, apparently, to the ankle. Once in a while, you guess right. He had the short zone. He had what they call the red zone. He came right on up from the tight safety spot and salted the line, or the back, or the back away, but he left the field. Third and 16. Schmeising has him, and down he goes. Schmeising and Fred Heron dropping Landry at the two-yard line. And again, you cannot fault the St. Louis defense today. They have not given up a touchdown, and they have contained this Detroit team very well. Again, all the receivers were covered. Landry will go over and try to talk upstairs and find out somebody should have done something else. Herman Weaver now will be kicking against a real wind if that's flag is any indication he may have trouble getting this ball out to midfield. Well, Ladderette is the deep man, and he's at the 37-yard line of Detroit. <laughs> nice high kick, however. Fair catch signaled for by Ladderette at the 41 of Detroit. 
So the Cardinals in what they call excellent field position. With the score, Detroit 9, St. Louis 3. Let's pause for a moment. At the Lions 40. Back guard. Help. Somebody missed a handoff, and it's dropped back at the 42. Jim Hart on the ball for St. Louis. The Cardinals had what they call the old flea flicker series, where Hart actually gives it to the deep back or fakes it and gives it to Jackie Smith coming around. And they have a screen off of it, a deep pass, an end around with Smith. And that time, Alex Karras, old bully boy, almost got it for the Lions. Second and 12 at the 42. Cardinals on the last series began to move the ball quite well. It was stopped by an interception in the end zone. Complete. John Gilliam out at the 22-yard line. Number 44 runs a great double out. Has the ball apparently just over the outside line. He's got to put both of them down. Let's see what the call is going to be. He's ran a pattern. He ran a pattern a week ago, which was for an apparent touchdown against Philadelphia, and they called it back. Here it is. Now you be the judge. Hart on the deep sideline, a double out, and only one foot in. You saw it. Third and 12. And wide open, too. Interception out of bounds at the 40. This sixth interception of the year. This is from ground level now. Here is Davey Williams coming out, number 80. Runs a good pattern. Tries to drive Barney off. Barney didn't take any of the fakes though. Maintained his status quo. And this is the gambler. The cornerback is either the hero or the goat. And I'll tell you, Lynn Barney's just one of the super players. A fourth turnover committed by St. Louis. Go about the 42-yard line. Well, in three weeks, CBS will bring you the Sun Bowl game from El Paso, Texas, with Texas Tech 8-3, meeting Georgia Tech 8-3. Saturday, December 19th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, live and in color. Well, it's got to be warmer in El Paso than it is here today, right? Second down and eight at the 42 for Detroit. Alty Taylor finding the daylight. John Parrish making the stop up at the St. Louis. Slow motion, Jack. Watch Charlie Sanders, number 88. He's not only a great receiver, he'll battle to the top of the screen. See if you can find 88 up there. Freitas is also out in front, but that tight end just stayed with the outside linebacker over there and did a job on Stallings, which is a, that's a tough job to do. Well, that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Detroit 9, St. Louis 3. We now battle we have here in Tiger Stadium. The Lions now first and 10 at the Cardinal, 46. Taylor, nowhere, loss on the play. Schmazing made a great defensive play, number 82. He just sealed it off. And remember now, the Lions have the wind to their back for this fourth period. And I mean, it's, it's really blowing right now. Second and 12. And Landry in trouble. Does not get out of it. Schmeezing and Kruger. And Bob Rowe all in there to complicate young Craig Landry's life. 
There's the win. Has the flag straight out. And again, the St. Louis defense, amazing. Smartest thing Landry has done at times is to take the loss, put the ball away, and suffer a little bit. Because if he's throwing that ball around, that Cardinal secondary appears to have most of the receivers covered up pretty well. Third down and 19. time now flags down all over intercepted Larry Wilson with the football and he gets it all the way to the 24 yard line of Detroit a flag is down at the Cardinal 40 they're going to call this back for holding Charlie Sanders the tight end they went into a zone rotation both linebackers Rivers and Stallings began to badger Sanders and the call was that they held him and retarded his uh, the route that he wanted to take. Boy, a great interception by Wilson. Let's see if that's the official call. That's what we read from up here. Pat Haggerty holding against St. Louis. First down, Detroit at the 49-yard line of St. Louis. Big penalty. Mm. Far to about the 46. Jamie Rivers on the stop along with Kruger. Well, that's the biggest play that the Cardinals have had this year uh, when you just look at them day by day. Instead of the Cardinals with the ball deep in Detroit territory, Detroit keeps possession and the clock continues to go. A little over 13 minutes on that clock. Second down and seven. Half a yard or a yard at most on the play. Whirly there to break it up. Be third down and seven. The Lions come in here seven and four. We watched them humiliate the Green Bay Packers opening day 40 nothing. Then we saw the Redskins beat them. They've had some injuries, but they're a solid club that still thinks second place in a playoff berth is available. Again, for the fifth time this afternoon, the big red defense has thrown Greg Landry. This time, back at the 44-yard line, 45-yard line. This is from Landry now as he tries to set up in what should be a pocket, but Heron's the one that does it. Fred Heron comes in, the 260-pounder. Fourth and 17. 11 minutes, 50 seconds left to play in the game. St. Louis about to get the football. And out of bounds, they will get the football at the 46-yard line of St. Louis of uh, Detroit. I don't know whether that was a mix up in the signals, a bad pass from center or what. That'll be the first bad pass from center, I think, that uh, the Detroit center's ever made us. I think Ed Flanagan said that, didn't he, Jack? With the score, Detroit 9 and St. Louis 3. Let's pause for a moment. <laughs> MacArthur Lane. To the 43. Jack, uh, the Lions surely wouldn't have gone for some kind of a fake punt. The, the ball did hit the up back that's usually just a blocker. 
Uh, it didn't even get back to Weaver until it was on the ground when he scrambled for it and tried to run it out of there. But we haven't seen this yet to, to see if the snap went to the up back or where it was fumbled. But it's a big, uh, a big one for the St. Louis team to come up with it. Second down and seven at the 43. Lane again. Oh. A loose football. Ball at the 43. No gain. Third down and seven. Green Bay leading Pittsburgh 13 to 9 in the fourth period. MacArthur Lane has 33 yards on 10 carries. Immediately following this game, the San Francisco Atlanta battle, a big one in that Western Conference coming up. Big third down, St. Louis, right here. Well, trippingly, Hart goes down back at his own 47. Neither team can get the crusher. Just lost the footing. It looked like uh, the traction got him more than the big rush did. Williams and Barney deep. Laderette to punt. We have 10 minutes and five seconds left to play. At the six yard line, very effective punt. So the Lions will have to dig out of a deep hole here with nine minutes and 59 seconds remaining in the game. 47 yard punt with the score Detroit nine and St. Louis three. Let's pause for a moment. The throw six and a half yard line. And nine minutes, 49 seconds left to play. Plenty of time. If you're a St. Louis rooter, it's nine to three Lions. And they are deep in their own territory. Out to the nine and a half yard line, a pickup of about three yards on the play. Stalling 67. Slowly there, Ralph Kruger, number 70, defensive end. And uh, offensively, Jack, you're thinking now any big mistake that could turn up as a touchdown for the Cardinals loses the game for you. If you're a Detroit person, 10 to 9. There could be a tightening up uh, perhaps in the series. Second and seven. Landry on a nice fake, and he gets out of the first bit of trouble and goes for the first down at the 22-yard line. He had a 10.6 rushing average going into this game. 15 yards he's rushed for today on four carries, and that's a big one. Well, he's 6'4", 205 pounds in his third year, and he's spent a lot of of his career with the Lions watching other people work. Uh, Landry is a good runner. We've seen him go 50 yards at times on a quarterback sneak. But that was one of the biggest plays that he's pulled off in three years. First and 10 with breathing room at the 21. Faulty Taylor. Ah, number 57, Don Parrish, the rookie linebacker. Beautiful execution as he breaks through and drops him for a loss. Jack, here is that snap now, that punt moments ago now. Flanagan over the ball. It, it snapped to the right side. It looks like they were going to run the football to start with. The formation moved to the right side and had to be one of the all-time gambles that didn't work. That was that punt a few moments ago. Second and 13. Oh, look out. Oh! Jamie Rivers had it and then dropped it. What's the middle linebacker? Jamie Rivers. Here he is sitting up looking Landry right in the eye, eyeball to eyeball. He'll go back into his appointed zone and he's right there. Of course, the receiver's job is not to let Rivers have it. Third down.
Bell far, but he cannot get away. It'll be fourth down and about 10. As Larry Stalling said, that's all you get. St. Louis gets the football with seven minutes and 25 seconds left to play. You mentioned Stallings, number 67, uh, a bona fide all pro. Larry's had his greatest year back in the line for the Cardinals. Really super. Well, next Saturday, CBS will bring you another interconference game with the Dallas Cowboys meeting the Cleveland Browns at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, live and in color. That's the big game in this Eastern Conference. Weaver to kick, almost blocked, but he's chasing the deep man. Laderette on the run, touches it. Out of bounds, it'll be, I believe, St. Louis's ball. Whoa, that gets dangerous. We gave Flanagan the bad snap before, which now we don't think it was Flanagan's fault, just a fumble snap on the run, but this last punt actually hit Laderette's heel and went over his shoulder into the Detroit bench. <laughs> With the score, Detroit 9, St. Louis 3. Let's pause for a moment. Five, six, first and 10 at their own 42. Six minutes, 53 seconds left. Well, Davey Williams was over there. It'll be second and 10. Number 17 has learned a lot, though. In the past, he might have thrown that ball down the middle somewhere in a hurry. Now he wisely picks places up in the stands. Williams and Gilliam on the left. Number 74, Larry Hand, defensive right end. Reynolds sets up one of the best blocking tackles, I guess, on pass protection in the National Football Conference. There's a battle, 71 and 74, and Larry just gets sort of the outside route, a direct route right to Hart's back. Back to the 34-yard line. Third down, 18. Gilliam left, Williams right. Humble. Detroit recovers at the 30-yard line as the Lions showed a blitz, faked it. And somebody pulled away, and Alex Karras, a one-time Iowa star, an all-time Detroit star, comes up with perhaps the biggest football recovered in Detroit in quite a few years. The fifth turnover by St. Louis. Three fumbles, two interceptions. The Lions with six minutes left to play. First and 10 at the Cardinal 32. Chased out of bounds by Schmeezing, and look at that Schmeezing run. The Giants on top of the Buffalo team now 20 to 6 in the fourth period. An important ball game for the Giants, of course, knowing full well that maybe uh, Detroit could beat the St. Louis Cardinals. Tarkin hit Tucker Fredrickson with that giant touchdown. Second down and six at the Cardinal 28. Five minutes, 52 seconds left. Greg Landry brings them out. Landry has rushed for 19 yards on five carries. Now far, now far for the first touchdown of the afternoon. 28 yards off the right side. From ground level now, this is called the old toss trap. Watch the outside fake by Landry, which makes everybody defensively go to the outside, and the ball is already on the inside in the person of Mel Farr. A fast defense can overrun and go outside, and of course, 
Good offense to take advantage. Detroit now leads 16 to 3 with 5 minutes and 44 seconds left. We'll be back with the Lions kickoff in just a moment. A tensely fought, highly brilliant defensive game has just been scored by Mel Farr on a 28-yard scamper. Makes it 16 to 3. 5 minutes, 44 seconds left. Laderette at the 8. Down at the 28. Mel Farr has 79 yards in 18 attempts today, Russian. But now the Cardinals have encountered a new enemy, the clock. 5.34 left. Time enough, but not too much. And of course the breeze is still in quarterback Hart's face. And now the Detroit defense will be just a little bit looser and doubling up where they feel they can. Screen to Roland, but he can't hold on to the football. A lot of blue shirts over there, too. Second and 10 at the 28. Hard is 9 for 24 and 121 yards. Johnny Rowland just tried to run with it before he got the ball under control. Green Bay 13, the Pittsburgh Steelers 12 in the fourth period. Like them close, folks. That's Alan Watson's uh, field goal, a 47-yard job. Well, this game here has been extremely close all day. This is the largest margin. Jerry Danen in. He's at the left side with Gilliam. Second and 10. Flag is down. And Hart is dropped at the 31-yard line by Newmar. Number 50, the left side linebacker. The call is going to be holding on Ernie McMillan, number 73. The rookie, Mitchell, number 83, was giving him a big pass rush. As I said, late in the game now, the Lions can toe to the outside and lay their ears back and come, and that's what they're doing. Holding against St. Louis, the ball at the 12 and a half yard line. The Jets now lead Oakland 13 to 7. The Lions love to play ball control with 3.28 left. Taylor to the 43 yard line. Now, still a good chance to get uh, 10 victories for uh, this 1970 season. And a 10 3 and 1 would get you quite a ways. First down for Detroit. If offsetting penalties occur, another play is given. If the offensive team commits the penalty, the half and the game are over. All right. 
Back in action. First down and ten. Far getting nowhere. Loss of a yard or two. Stallings on the blitz playing going the other way but there's a flag down. That's man who's only six. Far gets to the 42 yard line. We look at head coach Charlie Winter across the way with the St. Louis Cardinals. But we'll still be on top of that Eastern Conference tonight. But we'll head coach Joe Schmidt, whose team has only one objective now to win all their games and try for that fourth spot, that being the best second place club in the playoffs. How ironic that one of their victories was that record field goal by Tom Dempsey that might mean so much to them. Far now has 88 yards and 21 carries. And he leaves the game in a very productive afternoon. Charlie Sanders leaves the football game. He caught five for 78 yards. Bruce Maxwell is in for far. This is Taylor. No gain on the play. On ground level, that last play. There's Maxwell leading the way as the ball goes to Taylor, but there, there's no stopping Ralph Kruger, the defensive end, who played his block, got to the ball carrier, and dumped him. It is third down and five. At the 42 yard line of St. Louis. 54 seconds left. And it is complete to Craig Cotton, the tight end who came in in place of Charlie Sanders. Close to a first down. down as the Lions are holding on to the football. Thirty four seconds left to play. Oh what a football game it has been though. As we all anticipated it would be tremendous defense on both sides. There's Maxwell. Getting to about the 34 yard line. May not be time for another play. Countdown begins here in Detroit. That is the football game as the Detroit Lions have defeated the St. Louis Cardinals 16 to 3. Coach Joe Schmidt and center Flanagan with the football as they come off a very good victory for them against a very good and tough St. Louis ball club. And I suppose if you were to put the finger on anything, it came on the turnovers. The Lions committed two. They fumbled and they had an interception. But the Cardinals had five. And a good defense will always cause that. The Cardinals fumbled three times. And Lem Barney picked off two interceptions. And now let's get ready here for John Fitzgerald in CBS Control. 
Well, Jack, we expected a tough struggle, and that's just what we saw. The Cardinals proved they had a tough defense. Of course, they uh, went something like 17 quarters without giving up a touchdown. The Lions waited until late in the game to get theirs today, but uh, the Lions putting more scores on the board a chilly day and come up with an important victory. But as you pointed out, the Cardinals' title hopes are still certainly very much alive, and the Lions had the win going into these last three games, hoping for a spot in one of the championship playoff games.